Welcome to Electron Line. In this playlist, we're going to talk about proofs, proofs in geometry. And that's something that always puzzles a lot of people. So let's go ahead and very systematically work our way through understanding what proofs are, what kind of things you use to make proofs, to put proofs together, and then actually how to execute the proofs. So what we're going to start with here is some basic definitions of some basic terms used in proofs. We're going to talk about principles, properties, and theorems. Now principles, those are things that are empirically discovered. Ex discovered through experiment, discovered through thinking about it. You discover things and those are called principles. They came first. Those are, they set certain rules and regulations about what's going to come next. Those do not require any proof. They're self-evident. You just know that they are. And they fall in two categories. Either they're called definitions. Definitions is where you define or explain something. It just, that's the way it is. Or they fall under assumptions. And again, assumptions, they're self-evidence. You don't need to prove them. We just know that they are true. They're true in various ways, and we divide them into two categories. The two categories are called axioms and postulates. Now, axioms is something that you use in math, like in algebra. Say, for example, that a plus b equals b plus a. That would be considered an axiom. But postulates are specific to geometry, where we deal with comparing angles and comparing lines and comparing planes and figures and things like that. So that's defined under postulates, and that is used in geometry. Again, no proof required. We're simply going to state them. Now, in order to do proofs, you do have to bring up these assumptions called postulates and geometry to show that, yes, you can say that from A, you can go to B, you can go to C, you can go to D, based upon these postulates or based upon these definitions. There's a second category called properties. Properties are what we call characteristics, rules, or laws about a certain thing. For example, when we talk about a square, everybody would know that a square has four sides. And one of the properties of a square is that all four sides are equal to one another. So that's a property about squares and that the angles are all 90 degree angles. Those things can be used also to do proofs because when we compare something to a square, then you know, oh, if it's a square, all sides are equal. Again, no proof required. We simply accept those because those are the rules. Those are the characteristics of the things that we're talking about. The third category is actually theorems. Theorems are statements and they need to be proven. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use principles, primarily postulates and properties, characteristics about certain things in order to prove certain comparisons. For example, we want to be able to prove that two triangles are congruent. Well, how do we do that? Well, we're going to use a certain set of these postulates and properties in order to do so. So we then come up with a statement called a theorem, and we're going to prove those theorems with the use of postulates and properties. Hopefully, this video helps you understand what those terms are. We're going to go into more detail because this is just an overview of them. But without this, sometimes you get very confused because your textbook will talk about postulates, talk about assumptions, talk about principles, and you start wondering, wow, what's what? Now you know that sometimes they use these words interchangeably, and now you'll know that, oh, when they talk about principles in geometry, they really are talking about postulates or potentially also definitions. If they talk about properties, then they talk about characteristic things about certain figures and certain uh, rules, or again, no proof required. And then the theorems, of course, is what we're going to use to actually prove things, right? We're going to prove these theorems using what we've learned before. There's some memorization involved, but again, we're going to try and characterize them and order them in a certain way, in such a way that you can say, okay, now I know how to do this. And that's the idea. So we're not guessing. We know where we're going with all this. That's where it starts.